This video will look at the outdoor reset control parameters and how to set them for the Vitatronic family of controls. Vitatronic controls are used on all residential and commercial boilers with the exception of Vitadens 100s. Weather compensated controls allow us to maintain a consistent and comfortable interior environment as our building envelope experiences different heat loss and heat gains throughout the year. The dead of winter sees our largest heat loss, but it accounts for only a small portion of our total heating season. Heat moves from a warm place to a cold place faster with a greater temperature difference. That's why images like this are so spectacular, but try it with colder water or on a warmer winter day and you're just going to get wet. Our building also experiences a greater heat loss when it's colder outside. Weather compensation allows us to add more or less heat as the heat loss increases or decreases. A properly set outdoor reset control will match the heat gain from the boiler to the heat loss to outdoors. When the heat loss is lower, we add less heat. When the heat loss is greater, we add more heat. Remember, the radiator and the room share the same relationship as the building to outdoor. With a greater temperature difference, we'll move heat faster. The result is a more comfortable, evenly heated space, regardless of the outdoor temperature. At the heart of the weather compensated control is the heating curve. Surveys have shown that less than 50% of heating contractors in North America understand how to properly set a heating curve. After you watch this video today, hopefully you will not be among them. To do it right, you will need to know a few things. The first thing is where you are. Different places in the world experience different heat loss due to local weather conditions. The next is what type of heat emitters are being used. Some heat emitters need a greater water temperature to deliver the same amount of heat as others. Third is the building construction. An inefficient, poorly insulated building will lose heat faster than a well-insulated, highly efficient building. And lastly, maybe the hardest thing, is who occupies the space. Different types of people have a different idea of what feels warm to them. Let's take a look at the various parts and how they are used. At the bottom of the chart is the outdoor temperature scale. This would be the temperature that the outdoor temperature sensor is seeing. On the left hand side of the chart is the boiler water temperature scale or in some cases the loop temperature. This is the calculated water temperature that the system will get from either the boiler or the mixing valve. On the right hand side and wrapping around the top is the slope scale with each number attached to a line which focuses on the anchor point on the bottom left of the chart. Along the left hand side of the chart we see a scale marked shift. It is a vertical adjustment and when you make an adjustment to shift it grabs the anchor point from whichever line you've chosen and moves it up or down vertically. The range is minus 13 to 40 Kelvin. Kelvin is a measurement of absolute temperature, and 1 Kelvin is equivalent in size to 1 degree Celsius. Making a change of 10 Kelvin is essentially making a change to your set point of 10 Celsius across the entire slope line that you've picked. The final adjustable parameter is the room set point. This is designed as an end user value. It moves the anchor point up and down on a 45 degree angle based on a desired room temperature. This may be a virtual temperature or a real temperature depending on the hardware installed. When you set a value in slope, you're essentially picking one of the lines off the chart. The control will allow you to set a number between the designated lines. As you can see, when you make an adjustment to the slope setting, the anchor point on the left doesn't change. When you change the number, you essentially pick a different line off the chart. The higher the number, the steeper the line. And with a steeper line, you get a greater water temperature change for the same reduction in outdoor temperature. There will be a minimum and maximum operating set point set by the boiler's coating card. A heating curve selection which takes the temperature beyond that will flatten at those temperatures and no further increase or decrease can happen. Minimum and maximum limits can also be set for individual heating circuits in coating level 2 at addresses C5 and C6. These settings come in handy if you want to, for example, set a minimum temperature for a high temperature baseboard loop or a maximum temperature for a radiant floor loop. The factory default setting for slope is 
Let's look at what happens to the calculated set point when we use a slope of 1.4 but make an adjustment to shift or to the room set point. With all the settings at default, with a minus 20 outdoor air temperature, the calculated boiler water temperature is 74 Celsius. With a warmer outdoor air temperature of 0 Celsius, the set point is reduced to 50 Celsius. And at 10 Celsius, the calculated water set point is 38 Celsius. So let's leave the slope at 1.4 and make an adjustment to shift and see how that changes the calculated set point. Adjusting the shift parameter moves the entire selected slope up or down the vertical scale between plus 40 Kelvin and minus 13 Kelvin. One Kelvin is equivalent to one degree Celsius in size. Inputting a shift of 10 Kelvin now increases the calculated set point by 10 Celsius across the entire line. The final adjustable parameter is the room set point. This parameter allows the end user to make an adjustment to room temperature which is something they understand, as opposed to having to understand the heating curve. As a virtual number, this value is set at the boiler. If a Vita Troll is actually installed in the space, the room set point can then be set at the Vita Troll and room feedback is possible to the boiler so it can customize the set point based on actual room temperature. When making an adjustment to the room set point, it takes the selected slope line and moves it up or down the scale on the 45 degree angle between 35 and 5 Celsius. If we adjust the room set point to 25, but leave the shift and slope at the factory default, we can see that the adjustment isn't linear across the whole line. In the case of this example, at minus 20, we are actually 10 degrees higher, and at 10, we are actually 10 degrees higher. But at zero, there's actually a 12 degree increase in the set point, higher than the factory default. Slope, shift, and the room set point are all used to fine tune the calculated weather compensated set point. For Wiesmann heating circuits, the contractor settings are slope and shift, and the end user sets the room temperature. Our residential boilers using Vitatronic controls also have zone circuits. These operate a little different than the Wiesmann heating circuit. A zone circuit is designed to operate with a traditional thermostat. This means that there is no room set point within the control and the Wiesmann Vitatrol is not compatible with a zone circuit. When using zone circuits, the contractor settings are slope and shift. And the user settings are what's available within the thermostat for scheduling and room temperature set point. Remember, when setting heating curve parameters, you not only need the design load day, the coldest day of the year you expect to see, you should also know the system water temperature required on the base load days, the warmest day of the year you expect to need heat. So now, let's look at three system design examples and some possible heating curve parameter settings for each. We will use an outdoor air temperature range between 15 and minus 20 Celsius. System example one, boiler water temperature set point range will be between 30 and 71 Celsius. The factory default heating curve settings are slope 1.4 and shift 0 Kelvin. Adjusting slope to 1.2 and shift to 4 Kelvin gets us pretty close to the range we desire. We could make further adjustments, but remember this is boiler water temperature set point, not rocket science, and a couple of degrees on either side isn't going to make that much difference to the ability of the heat emitters to deliver the right heat. For system example two, the boiler water temperature set point range will be between 40 and 85 Celsius, a little bit warmer than our previous example. If we set the slope at 1.5 and the shift at 9 Kelvin, you can see we get pretty close to where we want to be. And because of the building mass and other variables in the system, this is probably close enough. For system example three, let's look at a boiler water temperature set point range between 20 and 45 Celsius. This is cooler than the previous two examples. Perhaps this is a radiant floor heating system. Setting the slope at 0.8 and the shift at minus five Kelvin gets us where we want to be. Also notice that when we use a negative Kelvin shift, the warm weather shutdown point changes as well. In this case, the warm weather shutdown point is moved to 15 Celsius. That means above 15 Celsius outdoor air temperature, the heating system will be disabled. 
The parameters within the Outdoor Reset or Weather Compensation Control are a very powerful tool to improve efficiency and comfort in your hydronic heating system. But remember, you need to know some basic information to get the system settings correct. You need to know your design load day, but you also need to know your base load day. You need to know what water temperature is required to deliver the BTUs needed from your heat emitters. You need to know how well the building is going to hold the heat you send it, and you'll need to know a little bit about the comfort preferences of the people who occupy the space. Weather Compensated Controls, a very powerful tool in a hydronic heating system when you understand them.